Hello viewers, yes, this is Ranjana ma'am and you are watching. Yes, yours as well as my channel. You have seen the thumbnail and you know what is coming here. Yes, it's again Macbeth for my IESC students. I've done up till Act 3 and this is Act 4. I'm sorry, Act 1, Scene 3 and this is Act 1, Scene 4. So this scene is where Macbeth reaches King Duncan for the first time after his triumphant appearance in the battle, driving away the king's enemies and forcing them to surrender, killing the rebel chief Macdonald and forcing the king of Norway to surrender. And the king is very happy at his achievement, he is really overwhelmed and he has honoured Macbeth with the title, the Thane of Corder. And, and he has also sent Ross and Angus to bring Macbeth or to present Macbeth before them. And it is this scene, Act 1, Scene 4. So what are we waiting for? Let's start. scene 4 and where is the place? It's forest. A room in the palace. Flourish. So flourish of trumpets announcing the arrival of someone. Dignified. And who comes? Enter Duncan, Malcolm his elder son and Donaldian the younger one. Lennox. Lennox is a lord and attendance. Duncan, is execution done on order? Are not those in commission yet returned? So Duncan wants to know whether the execution of the tale of order has been carried out. He had ordered the execution and he wants to know whether the execution has been carried out or not. So those people who had been given the job of carrying out the execution, have they returned? Malcolm, my liege, they are not yet come back, but I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. He died as one that had been studied in his death to throw away the dearest thing he owed as if it were a careless trifle. So Malcolm reports or Malcolm tells the king that no, these people have not yet returned. But Malcolm had a discussion with one person who was present at the site of the execution and he had seen the manner in which the pain of Corder died. So he said, that person told Malcolm that the thing of Corder, he confessed that yes, he had been a part of the treason, he had committed treason. And he also begged that the king should forgive him. Forgive him for treason, not to be, ex not to be excused from the execution. Before dying, he just asked forgiveness of the king. And then how did he die? So this person who had seen the execution said that in his lifetime he never did something so noble as the way he died. That means he died in a noble way. His death was more befitting of his status than his life. He was the thing of corner. But what did he do? He uh, proved a traitor to the king. So he did not do anything glorious in his life. But while dying, he died in a noble manner. And he died as if he had practiced or studied how to die. How to throw away the most valuable possession. What is the most valuable possession for us? Our life. And as if he had practiced how to throw away his life as if it was a nothing very valuable. So how did he die? As if it was, he died, he faced his death as if it was nothing valuable. 
there is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman, gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. This line is ironical. Why? Because Duncan says that there is no way in which you can know what is going on in the heart of a man because it doesn't show in his face. So you cannot find in the face of a man what is going on in his mind. And then the king repents or regrets that he had placed a lot of trust on this thing of Corder and he betrayed him. So don't you think it is ironical because now the king has conferred this title on Macbeth, the thing of Corder. And he will also prove to be a traitor, rather a worse traitor than the thing of Corder. He will kill the king only. And the king says that you cannot read the face of a... Uh, Looking at the face, you cannot read what is happening in his mind. Yeah, the same thing will happen. Macbeth will present himself as the most loyal subject. But what will he do? He will kill the king. He will commit regicide. So whoever becomes the thane of Corder as it becomes the traitor. Enter Macbeth, Banco, Ross and Angus. So the moment Duncan sees Macbeth, he is so happy. Oh, worthiest cousin. Macbeth is a close relation of the king. So that is why the king says, Oh, worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Thou art so far before that swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Would thou hadst less deserve that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine? Only I have left to say more is thy due than more than all can pay. So Duncan just see what a nice king he is. He could have accepted whatever Macbeth has done. Oh, it's his duty. He is my subject and it is his duty to do it. But no, Duncan knows how to be grateful. He is grateful to this general. He is his cousin and also the general of his army. And Duncan is really overwhelmed by the way Macbeth has supported him and brought him victory. So he says that you are, oh my worthiest cousin, I was feeling very guilty because... I felt I was ungrateful to you. That means he could not express in his gratefulness in a manner proportionate to the service of Macbeth. That is why he feels I am I feel I am great ungrateful to you. Why? Because he feels he has not uh, rewarded Macbeth in the same proportion as Macbeth has served the king. So he says that yes, your service has reached your service, your loyalty they have reached such heights that no reward can come up to it. That means however much I reward you your loyalty and your service towards me is always higher. So that is why he says I wish that you deserve less. So that it would have been possible for me to thank you and to reward you in proportion to your merits. But your merits, your services, your loyalty, they are much higher. And I don't know how to compensate it. I don't know how to pay you back. So whatever I can say is that you deserve much more than any reward which I can give you. That means I don't have reward. I cannot give you that much reward as you deserve. You deserve much more. Whatever reward I give you, it is nothing in comparison to your merits or to your service and loyalty. A king saying this is such a nice king. The service and the loyalty I owe. In doing it pays itself. Your highness's part is to receive our duties and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants which do but what they should by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. At this moment, Macbeth does not show his true colors. 
something is going on in his mind since the prophecy of the witches but he doesn't show it he shows his loyalty only towards the king but he has written a letter to his wife about the prophecies so he says that the loyal service towards you actually is well rewarded i have permit i have done nothing very special i have only been a loyal subject and i have served you loyally and i feel i am well rewarded because you have allowed me to serve you so in your allowing me to serve you i feel i am well rewarded and rather you are the king so it is your privilege to receive our service our duties are towards your throne in the same manner as the duties are of children are towards their parents the way children serve their parents we as subjects serve you in that manner we as subjects serve you and the throne in the same manner as children serve their parents or the servants the way they serve their masters so in protecting you in protecting your person in protecting you i have done only that much is expected of me that much i should do nothing more i have done nothing more i have only done that much which is expected of me which i should be doing duncan you are welcome here i have so welcome hither i have begun to plant thee and will labor to make thee full of growing so he welcomes macbeth and says that yes i have planted you that means i have laid the seeds of your greatness and in time that it will grow into a huge tree to make thee full of growing so he has planted the seed of macbeth's greatness and it will grow into a big flourishing tree noble banco thou hast no less deserved nor must be known no less to have done so let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart then he turns to banco because macbeth, macbeth and banco both had fought equally in a brave manner to save the king and his kingdom so the king turns towards banco and he says you have you deserve no less than macbeth and will be rewarded also no less than macbeth and you deserve all the praises which macbeth has been showered with so first he regarding banco the king embraces him and holds him close to his heart so banco he is really overwhelmed at this gesture of the king and what does he say there if i grow the harvest is your own so if i grow in your heart if i grow in your heart that means if you shower your love towards me i will always remain faithful towards you my services will remain to you forever my plenteous joys wanton in fullness seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow so he says i am really very happy my plenteous joy that means my heartfelt joys my abundant joys and they are so exuberant and how am i expressing them in drops of sorrow that means i am so happy and i feel that my happiness is in abundance and i cannot control myself and how do i express my happiness in tears tears are symbolic of sadness and sorrow but many times when you are very happy also tears come out from your eyes haven't you experienced anything like that whenever i teach macbeth earlier also when i taught macbeth and this line so i remembered when shushmita sen she became miss universe so i just remember the picture with her gloved hands the way she holds her hands to her face and tears streaming down her eyes that was not a 
not the those were not the tears of sadness they were the tears of happiness same is here with duncan his happiness is in such abundance that they show themselves in drops of sorrow or they show themselves in tears he is so happy that tears come out from his eyes sons kinsmen things and you whose place are the nearest no we will establish our estate upon our eldest malcolm whom we name hereafter the prince of cumberland which honor must not unaccompanied invest him only but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers from hence to inverness and bind us further to you and now he makes an important proclamation so he announces that sons that means malcolm and donalbin kinsmen macbeth he is a kinsman and thanes and you who are associated with me all those who are associated with me i want you all to know that i have decided to name malcolm as my successor to the kingdom i have decided the question of succession that the throne would go to my eldest son malcolm and from now onwards he will be known as the on and from now onwards he will be known as the prince of cumberland so that title is given to the uh, given to the prince who is to inherit the crown crown prince we say so that title is given to the crown prince so since duncan has announced malcolm as his successor or the crown prince he will be from now onwards known as the prince of cumberland and not only that only uh, this won't take place that means the announcement of malcolm as the crown prince or making him coronating him as the crown prince not only this but all those who have been uh, who have stood by the king in his tough times all of them will be honored so which honor must not unaccompanied invest on him only so only malcolm will not be honored by the title the prince of cumberland but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers so not only malcolm but all those who deserve to be honored they will be honored and now for first let us proceed towards inverness inverness is macbeth's castle the place where macbeth lives that is inverness so he has made a plan to honor macbeth first by proceeding towards his castle in inverness so he says from hence to inverness and bind us further to you so he is requesting macbeth that let us head towards or let us start going towards inverness where your hospitality will make us still more indebted to you i will become more indebted to you by your hospitality when we reach inverness he knows macbeth will be showing him all hospitality but what he doesn't know let it be a secret macbeth the rest is labor which is not used for you i'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach so humbly take my leave so macbeth wants to reach inverness first and inform his wife and he also wants to uh, carry on the preparations the coming of the king is not an ordinary affair so he has to make the castle ready he has to instruct his servants and tell his wife that the king is coming so they have to make good preparations to welcome the king so that is why he says that those jobs which are not done for you that is labor that is boring that is tiring which is not done for you that means the things which i don't do for you they are really boring but all the things which i do for you that is good what a uh, nice line what flattery and then he says i shall first go as the messenger and make my ha wife happy with the news of your arrival so you are 
in, you have intended to visit us and it's an honor for us and I want to make my wife happy by giving the news myself. So I beg your permission. I want to take your leave so that I might be the first one to go and inform her of it. So the king agrees. My worthy corder. So yes, he gives permission. And Macbeth, this is a soliloquy. He says it to himself. No one else hears it. The prince of Cumberland. So he is thinking on this. The prince of Cumberland means Macbeth, uh, Duncan has just now announced that his eldest son Mac, uh, Malcolm will henceforth be known as the prince of Cumberland. So Macbeth is thinking on it. That if the third, second prophecy of the witches, if it is to come true, in that case, Macbeth cannot allow Malcolm to be the prince of Cumberland. Because in that case, if you kill Duncan also, it's no use. After Malcolm becomes the prince of Cumberland, if Duncan is killed also, it is no use because automatically Malcolm will succeed to the throne. So he has to do something to before the job is done. That means before Malcolm is crowned the Prince of Cumberland, Macbeth should act. That is a step on which I must fall down or else overly. For in my way it lies. So this is a hurdle in his path. An obstacle. A hurdle in his path. So either he must over commit, either he must leap over it or he has to just lay down and accept it. That means if you want to become the king, you will have to cross this hurdle and if you are, if you are satisfied with what you are, then you can fall down and let things happen. If you let things happen, that means you don't want to become the king. If you want to become the king, you have to overleap it. Stars, these lines are important. Stars hide your fires. That means hide your lights. Stars make the night dark. Don't show your light. Why? Let not light see my black and deep desires. He doesn't want that the black and deep desires within him, the seeds of ambition planted by the witches, let these not be revealed. So stars, let not light see my black and deep desires. What are his black and deep desires? To murder the king and become the king himself. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. So he wants that the eye should not see what the hand is doing. That means commit the murder, but let not. He doesn't want to see it with his own eyes, but he wants the murder done. So, he wants the deed to be done, but his eyes, he doesn't want to see the fearful spectacle of the murder, which his hands will do, but he wants the deed to be done. He doesn't want to see it. He doesn't want to see the murder done, but he wants the murder to take place. That means, as if he wants to close his eyes and stab Duncan. So he wishes the job to be done, but he doesn't want the eyes to see this horrible or gruesome spectacle. True worthy Banco. And while and then he leaves. And when he leaves, Duncan is telling Banco. True worthy Banco, he is full so valiant. And in his commendations I am fed. It is a banquet to me. Let's after him, whose care is gone before to bid us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. This is ironical. Duncan has, ju Duncan's judgment or his, uh, yes, his judgment about Macbeth seems to be very wrong. So he says, yes, and he agrees with Banco. That means Banco also must be praising Macbeth. And these two will suffer later in the hands of Macbeth only. Macbeth will kill Duncan, later he will kill Banco because he knows that Banco will be the one to suspect me because he had heard of the witch's prophecy. So, and not only that, there is another reason why he will get Banco killed. He also wanted to kill Fleans or Banco's son because the witches had predicted that Banco will not become king but his sons will, sons and later also, 
the next generations they will he will be a line to a father to a line of kings so macbeth wants banco killed but at this time duncan and banco both are full of praises for macbeth so duncan agrees when macbeth talks nobly of when Dun, uh, banco talks nobly of banco banco talks nobly of macbeth so he says yes macbeth is really very brave as you have said and when i hear him praised i feel very satisfied so that means banco has praised macbeth in front of the king and the king is really happy and he says i feel very satisfied when i hear praises of macbeth it is as if like a treat to me praise hearing the praises of macbeth is like a treat to me and then he says let us follow macbeth macbeth is very anxious to give us a splendid welcome and that is why he has gone before us so he is a kinsman unparalleled kinsman without an equal so he is a peerless kinsman kinsman means related so he is a matchless relative so this is where act 1 scene 4 comes to an end this was a short scene so yes wait for the fifth one and let me bid you goodbye for the time being